If you're looking to edit photos but don't know what software to use, this video is for you because on my computer I've got installed six of the most popular photo editing software for those of you who are just starting off. What is happening people my name is Gaurav and I'm a travel and a wedding photographer based in Birmingham, England. In this video today I wanted to take you through some of the software that I have installed on my computer to help you decide what you can use if you're just starting off photo editing. I just want to point out that this is not an in-depth tutorial of the software that I'm about to show you. It's a brief overview to help you guys decide what's actually out there and what you can use if you're just starting off. And one of the reasons I'm making this video tutorial is because there's so many photo editing software out there to choose from and it can get a bit confusing. So some of the most common photo editing software you've probably already heard about is Photoshop. But you'll be surprised a lot of the photographers don't even use Photoshop. They use a software called Adobe Lightroom. So what is Adobe Lightroom and what is Photoshop and why is there two different versions of Adobe photo editing software out there? Let's just have a look into that quickly. So basically this is Adobe Lightroom classic. It's what most photographers like wedding photographers, event photographers, anyone that back processes a large quantity of images uses Adobe Lightroom. It's a really good way of selecting the images you like, editing the images you like, moving on to the next one really really quickly. So let me give you an example. So here you can see a lot of the photos that are shot in Vietnam and Noi. I can actually individually click through each one of these photos and decide which one I want. So I decided to edit this one for example and uh, I can move on to the next one. I don't, I don't like this, I don't like that, and so on. You get the idea. I can go through them one by one and edit the ones I like. And what I can also do is I can go to this photo, for example, and I, if I like the edit for this photo, I can copy the settings and I can apply them to another photo that I like. And there we go. And what I can do is I can go ahead with exposure and so on. You get the idea. I can move on very, very quickly editing the photos. So if I was to shoot a wedding, this is a really good way of working through my images very, very quickly. Right now, Photoshop, on the other hand, this is Photoshop, is more of an individual photo editing software. And with Photoshop, you can do things like cut out the background, you can replace the background, and you can composite other things on top of the background. And it's used for things like high-end skin retouching so again, it's not to batch process a lot of images. It's more to work on specific detail in an individual image. That's the difference. Photoshop is way more in depth and has many more functions than Lightroom. The only difference is it can't batch process photos like Lightroom. So just say if I wanted to get one of these photos and, and I wanted to add somebody in this photo, so I could actually take this photo into Photoshop and bring it back into Lightroom when I've finished editing. So there's two types of software. The software like Photoshop, the software like Lightroom for batch processing photos. So what about the prices for these software? How much do these actually cost? Let's just go onto the website for Adobe. Now a lot of these software you can actually get as a trial just to see if you like them, but I must point out majority of the professionals out there do use Photoshop and Lightroom, so no pressure. They've sort of got a monopoly on the whole thing as it is, but there are other software which we'll go into in a minute. Let's just discuss the price plan. So Photoshop and Lightroom, you used to be able to buy these software standalone. Now you, you have to actually go on a subscription. So the good news is you can have access to both Lightroom and Photoshop for the price of a Spotify membership. And the other benefit of getting Photoshop and Lightroom is that there's tons and tons and tons of material already out there. Tutorials, pretty much every other video tutorial on photo editing is on Photoshop or Lightroom. So that sort of helps. However, if you do not want to tie yourself into a subscription system, then I would recommend this next software that I'm about to show you. It's called Affinity Photo. Now, check this out. That's Photoshop. Let me just close that. That's Photoshop. That's Affinity Photo. Let me do that again. Photoshop, Affinity Photo. Can you see how they look similar? 
how have they not been sued yet? They look pretty much identical. And the good news is this software only costs £23.99 if you're in the UK. And um, it's actually half price right now. So you can go ahead and buy this software and do a lot of the things, most of the things, if anything, probably even more than Photoshop because these guys haven't been around long and their platform is absolutely amazing. The reason why I've got this software is why not? I was curious, I guess. And you want to know something else? This is a one time only purchase. So you don't have to spend more than £23. You Once you've paid for that, it's yours. It's not a subscription based scheme and it gets better. You actually have tons and tons of video tutorials for Affinity Photo on YouTube. So you're not going to get lost anytime soon. Look at that. Loads. Absolutely loads. Let's just type something in like. Oh, there it is. Frequency separation in Affinity Photo. So apart from it looking a bit cartoonish compared to Photoshop, I can promise you this is a very good software and don't let the price fool you just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's not good. It is a very good and powerful software. I guess they're just trying to get the leg through the door until they bump up the price and there needs to be competition. Right, so moving on, Affinity Photo is more of a Photoshop replacement, but what else is there that is like Lightroom or batch processing photos? If you want something to replace Lightroom or you're looking for an alternative, then I would highly consider Luminar 4. With Luminar, you can have a grid view to select your photos, to view all your photos. You can also have a single view, but it's on the side here. And you can select individual photos. You can copy and paste settings to another photo as well. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of loading the photos at the moment. And you have all your tools just like Lightroom. And the good news is it's not subscription based. With Lumina 4, you do have these artificial intelligence sliders, which apparently if you slide once and will edit the photo without you having to do anything. And you know what? It works really, really well. I hate to say it, but it does. So that's after I've just moved this slider to the right. And this is before. That's just with one slider. Let's just take another photo, for example. Let's just move that AI slider to the right. Great. Let's try this one. Brilliant. It's not actually only brightening the image. It's doing a, a lot of things. If, you, if you're used to photo editing, then I think you would realize that th this is just not brightening the image because look at this. Just focus on the bit at the top here. Can you see how it's brought back that detail? So it's not just brightening the image, it's actually brightening this bottom part here as well. So that's one of the really, really good functions I like in this software. If you're new to photo editing, this is something you really want to consider. This is only, drum roll. It's actually cheaper than that. It's cheaper than 69 pounds. That's for set of two, look at that. So if you don't know about it, you'll end up buying two copies to one it's actually 54 pounds without subscription you don't have to pay subscription for this 54 pounds and it's all yours oh actually i do want to point out i'm not affiliated with any of these companies so whichever software you choose to go with it's not really going to benefit me anyway it's whatever you think is best for you so that's Lumina for you and uh, again I, I do want to go into like the editing side of this thing but th this is not what this video is about this is to give you like a overview of what other photo editing software is out there so you can make better decisions these ai functions did so well that the company actually decided to release a whole new software based on artificial intelligence editing now apart from this you can, there's loads of other things you can go into just like lightroom and edit your photos but i want to show you this other software that this company has released and that is called luminar ai no surprise there. This is a photo of my cat. Yes, look how cute he is. And without going into too much detail, I want to show you why Luminar AI is different to Luminar 4. So I would probably say Luminar AI is sort of like a cute version of Luminar 4 because it does have a lot of the functions that Luminar 4 has. 
so it has the catalog function where you can view all your photos you can copy and paste your settings to another photo which is great but the reason why Lumina AI is different to Lumina 4 is because Lumina AI focuses primarily on the AI aspect of things no surprises there let's just take this photo for example of Billy and it intelligently recommends edits for this specific photo at a click of a button so it says animal and friends because it because it realized there's an animal in the photo so we're going to click on that it gives us more options let's just go for natural there we go easy as that let's just go to the before and after if you're not happy with that we can go to this one and we can go to this one and we can click through them and so on now you can actually control how much of this effect you want on the image and you can also edit this image further so if there's a certain aspect of the image that you don't like for example the crop you can get composition artificial intelligence to recommend a crop to you like that and if I press enter that will go that will apply the crop so I wouldn't really dismiss this software just because artificial intelligence is involved it is very good I was quite surprised by it to be honest so how much does it cost? Let's have a look. This software actually costs standalone. Ooh, license for two computers. Nope, one computer. 59 pounds. That's how much it costs. And that's a standalone fee. You don't have to pay subscription for that either. Although both of the Lumina software do have video tutorials out there on YouTube, I do think that they are very easy to use anyway. So that's a plus side. So that's Lumina AI. I want to show you one more piece of software that I personally use a lot and that is called Capture One. Many people haven't heard of this or if they have they don't use it because it looks very very scary but I promise you it isn't. It actually gives you very precise control over your photos. Now why have I got this and I've got Lightroom as well and I've got Luminar. Why have I got all this software? Well one because I'm a nerd and two because I don't believe in if it's not broken don't fix it. How do I know it's not broken if I haven't even compared it to anything else? Anyway, here's an image of an apple I photographed because I was bored out my head in lockdown and this was the only thing I could think of photographing. So I took a picture of an apple in an attempt to replicate fine art photography. Let me know what you think of this photo in the comments below. I personally use this software for when I'm out and about. So it's also on my MacBook. This software is very, very good for tethered capturing so basically um, if I'm shooting on my camera and I want the photos to show up instantly on my computer this software is really good for that although Lightroom does that too I just think this does it a lot better I wish I could show you we'll try and make a video about that in the future but that's the reason why I've got this software and personally I think when you throw photos in here right off the memory card they actually almost appear as if they're edited and there's very little I have to do to them to get the most out of them. So every now and again, I would shoot a wedding and I'll throw a few photos in here to see what the results are. And I'm quite surprised by the outcome. And that's why I've got this software because sometimes you need to try other things. I don't like the idea of throwing my photos into Lightroom and throwing a filter on top and calling it a day. That's not how I edit photos. I actually enjoy photo editing, which is another reason why I have all this software installed on my computer. Now for the price for this software, although it's highly unlikely if you're starting off, you're going to jump into this. It would be great if you could, if you can get used to something like this, it would be excellent. And then anything else that you use after this probably seem a lot easier. It's got the similar sort of thing, but all the sliders on the left, everything else is on the right. So it, it, it's not as scary as you think. You just have to start getting used to this. And again, there's so many video tutorials on this software on YouTube. That's a great thing about YouTube. Everything is on there. So how much does this cost? How much money do you have to pay for this particular software? Well, for this software, Capture One, you can actually have a subscription based or you can purchase the software outright and the other thing you can do is you can purchase the software for all camera types you can purchase the software for your specific camera type like Fujifilm Sony or Nikon 
I obviously went for the Nikon because I'm a Nikon shooter. So let's just go into that buy or subscribe. Here we go. So there we go at the bottom. You can see buy, buy, subscribe, subscribe. I actually went for this one because I wasn't too keen on the presets or the styles that they offer with that. And that's what you're paying extra £89 for, although it says you've got a discount. You get 110 styles, which are basically presets with the software. I wasn't too interested in that. I just wanted the standalone software, which is why I paid £200 for Capture One. I actually think I got it on a discount. Uh, it was. Um, before the software actually launched and they were giving away like an early bird discount so i think i might have paid about only half that uh, either way it was definitely worth it and i would recommend it to anyone so now that you know what sort of photo editing software is out there you can go out there and do a little bit more research i'll leave a link in the description below for these websites so you can check them out yourself in your own time and if you're still not sure what software you want to go for you can even check out in-depth video tutorials that are available on YouTube from other people. But if you've got the budget, go for Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. You cannot go wrong with that choice. Again, if you don't want to get into a commitment, do check out the other software we've just talked about. So that's it for this video tutorial, guys. Drop me a comment below if you think there's anything I've missed. Is there another software that you would recommend? Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell icon if you don't want to miss out on my latest content. And as always, I'll catch you in the next one.